All right, good afternoon, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here today. My name is Tammy Paiello. I'm an assistant professor in computer science uh, from Dartmouth College. And today I'll be presenting to you some of our work uh, in my lab in terms of what well, with the focus of improving the, health, the use of personal health data for understanding and influencing diabetes. My goal, if anything, uh, after the talk or through the talk is to hopefully invite you to come work in the diabetes space, um, but hopefully also from some of the stuff we're doing in the diabetes space, think about how it may be applicable in whatever spaces you work in. So um, just to give a sense, so I personally believe that um, in the di or digital devices in the diabetes space are far ahead um, compared to many other spaces. And the reason is because they are actual clinical grade wearable devices within diabetes. If you're familiar, there's a continuous glucose monitor. This is an FDA approved clinical device that people with diabetes patients wear on a daily basis. It collects data every five minutes, which is a lot of data across, min across uh, days, months, years. Diabetes is a chronic condition, so meaning people have had this condition for 20 years you know, long times, and they have all of this data being collected. So continuous glucose monitors, insulin pumps, these are also devices that people wear, and they use it for administering insulin, but there are also certain things that are required in the use of an insulin pump. So for example, uh, reporting meals, of course there's gonna be some error when it comes to that, but because someone is required to actually log your meal to get your bolus insulin, meaning the type of insulin that you need, there's actually data on mills for years in insulin pump data. Um, glucometers, this is probably the standard device that we're all familiar with, just a finger prick. It's a digital device. It collects clinical grade data, um, and it's very, it can be very useful. And definitely our standard activity trackers, the Fitbits, the Garmin's, um, a lot of what uh, these devices sense are very relevant in the diabetes space. Um, so just to give you an idea of the status quo, approximately 40% of patients, so I focus on type 1 diabetes, use CGMs on a daily basis. I did the math a little bit. In the U.S., that equates to around or a little less than 700,000 people just in the U.S. that use these devices every day that collects lot of, lots of data. Building off of um, some of the prior uh, presentations, the reality is in this space and in many other spaces, in the clinical setting, there is not knowledge as to what to do with the data. So there's all of this data that's collected that is actually not, like no one goes back to look at it. Um, so I guess some of my research is driven by how can we leverage some of that data to learn things about the condition, um, but also learn things that can help people uh, have better outcomes. So again, my focus of the research uh, that my lab does is, or at least currently, opportunistic use of digital health data to understand and improve outcomes, and then trying to use it to enable personalized care, develop digital biomarkers, study health trends that can inform interventions. So our research, I only have five minutes, so I, I'll just, I have uh, two images here of some of our prior papers just to point you to some of the work that we've done. Um, in terms of improving uh, the use of digital data. And then I want to talk to you primarily more about some of the work that we are doing in this space. So uh, one of the projects that we're leading, or uh, that I'm leading, is called HealthMind. And in this case, so we have the continuous glucose monitor data that collects clinical grade data, physiological data. But we've actually developed a mobile app that merges the CGM data with the activity tracker data and data from smartphones. So we can not only, well, from a lot of, um, from, so for example, from the CGM or any, any similar device, you know when an adverse event happens. So when it's high blood glucose or low blood glucose. So if you think of maybe the empatica, you know when there is a seizure or when there's not a seizure. So all of these things are good, but then can we also leverage or combine that data with other data that would help us understand not only when it happens, but why it happens and in what context it happens with. Um, and that's what we're working on um, with this. So this is an, a mobile app that we've developed that, that integrates these uh, different data sources, and we're actually running a trial um, with this. Another example is also trying to use um, or develop user-centered tools that help people leverage the full extent of the data to learn patterns relating to their own management. So particularly identifying patterns of high blood glucose, patterns of low blood glucose from their own data so they can make changes as necessary. And some of those changes could be changes needed in your insulin pump setting that would help improve management. Um, and in this case, we're developing just a um, 
an interactive web interface where people can log in, fetch their own CGM data, and analyze their own CGM data. In this space, the standard, I'm not sure if I mentioned this already, the standard is for clinicians to review two weeks of data. So there is all of this other data that is not looked at. And what we found in a prior study um, that included 54 patients with type 1 diabetes is that 96% of patients actually had patterns, temporal patterns, recurrent patterns of high blood glucose, low blood glucose that could be found in their own data, but currently it's not found, not discovered, because nobody goes back to, to look at the data. Um, like I also mentioned, we're doing um, some work on learning temporal changes and seasonal variations in glycemic control and glycemic states. So this is an example. This is just one figure. The, the manuscript is currently being written, and this work is done by um, being led by my, my postdoc projector who's sitting right there. Um, but in this work, we're trying to learn across long periods of, for example, CGM data, how can we identify patterns or changes, variations in across seasons, across holidays, across different time, different uh, different months of the year, all of that. So this is an example across months of the year. And one of the things that we can find or we can see from this is that we're observing that in the summer months, people tend to have better glycemic control or higher, um, better management of their, of their blood glucose. But in the late fall, winter, and early spring, people tend to actually have worse management of, like, of glycemic control. And that's very informative because it can help with interventions. It can help knowing when is the right time to intervene so that people can have better management throughout. So with that, this is my final slide. Again, like I said, some of my vision is hopefully to invite you to this space. Um, so my lab would be releasing or is in the process of releasing a data set um, that includes CGM and insulin pump data. 54 patients with type 1 with uh, diabetes, over 20,000 days of CGM data, over 8,000 days of insulin pump data. This is being released through some of the standard um, data sharing platforms uh, where, where an interested researcher would fill out you know, the survey and agree to certain things, like you're not going to re-identify patients, all of that. And if you go through that process, get in access to this data set so that you can come in and join. There's lots of work to be done in this space, and I think lots of things that can be learned from this space and applied to other spaces as well. So with that, I thank you so much for listening, and I open it up for questions. Uh -huh. That's a really good question. So definitely there's a lot of research in the space that people who, for example, use CGMs, so something that monitors uh, blood glucose more frequently, have better management of blood glucose, of glycemic, of better management of their diabetes than people that don't, for example. And I think that is an analogous to your question, meaning someone who, well, on the one hand, having it is one thing, but also using it, aka looking at the data, making sense of it, and using that to, um, to improve or make changes as, as needed. Yeah. Yeah. So from the insulin pump data, you have carb, what is called carb input, and that has the person's estimate of meals to get bolus insulin, so a type of um, rapid actin insulin. So it has that. I should say there are inaccuracies with people's estimates, but nonetheless, these are people's estimates. And hopefully combining that with the CGM data, you can see how the blood glucose responds could give us some idea of how well it was estimated also. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you.